Hello and welcome to this video. My name is David Thorne. Um, today we're going to be talking about using the uh, Nodes HTTP module. Um, in this video, we're going to be creating a very, very simple HTTP server and uh, we're going to be sending requests to that server using Postman. We're going to be handling the re requests. We're going to be talking about how to use um, how to send and receive data, first of all, um, status codes, how to send them, setting and reading of headers to verify whether the content type, whether there's a little bit of authorization there. We're not going to go into great detail of it, but we're, I'm just going to give you the ability to read headers uh, within the request. We're also going to go um, about how to handle different um, status codes. Um, it's not going to be a really, really long video, but it should give you enough information um, to be able to use the HTTP module. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? Okay, first thing that we need to do is import the HTTP module. And uh, because we're going to be creating a server, we need to be able to define a port and also the host name first of all. So let's just say the port that we're going to be listening on is then 8080 and that's going to be on localhost for, for the time being. Next thing we need to do is create a server and we can do this by saying HTTP create server. We need to have a listener for every single time we receive, we receive a re uh, request um, from a client. So we're going to create, put that in its own um, variable and this is then going to come here. And we'll, we'll handle this in a second. Um, prior to the, in order for the server to be active, it needs to be listening, um, listening on the port on that host. So let's just tell this to start um, listening on port 8080 and then the host 1000. And once this is up and running, it will call this um, completion handler. So let's just output some data to, to, the, um, to the console. And now, listening on ports uh, and host. Super. Okay, so we need to handle this. This, this is a um, request listener, and this has two parameters. The first one is the request, and this is an incoming uh, message. And the second one is the response. And this is a whoops, server response. Okay, just to separate this, um, the left one is the data coming in and the right one is the data that we're sending back. Okay, so first of all, we wanna handle requests and then create response. So they're two separate things because you, you first need to know that the data that has been sent from the client is valid and once you've done that you can then build your response based upon whether it's a bad request it's a good request um, the user's authorized etc etc okay but in this situation just to see that it's all working um, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to end the connection and we're going to send a status code um, back to the client to tell it's all working all right just very very simple so we do that by just saying response end and that closes the connection okay point to note is you can't write any more data after you've ended the connection all right so you need to be careful about where you do this and prior to doing this we're going to send a status code of 600 there is no http status code of 600 that's why we're sending it okay Right, so now that we've done this, let's go over to Postman and check that it's all working. But before that, we need to run the server, to so start the server. So uh, this one, and we can see listening on port 8080, host is local host. So let's come over to here and let's send the request. And obviously it's come back with our status of 600 with no body, nothing like that, because we didn't send any data back. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is um, handle the data that is being sent to us. And 
as you can see, what we want to send is um, this text first of all, all right? And yes or no, it is JSON, but we're just going to send it as text first of all, and we'll get to handling the headers. So this is a it's not tricky, but you've got to do a little bit more work for this. We need to save some data that's coming in. Um, so we're going to create a variable. Now this it, it, it's just going to be, I don't want to get too, too involved in this. Okay, so this is the data that we're going to be uh, getting back. And to do this, we've got to be able to read the data as it's been streamed to us. And don't get too scared. This is only a few lines of code. So every single time um, we receive data from the client, um, this one callback is going to be called. And it's going to be called with a chunk of data. And this is an any, all right, at the moment. And all we're going to do, whoops, is we're going to append it to the data. Now, this is a buffer, all right? So it's not string data, it's a buffer of bytes. And now we want to turn it into string. So what we've got to do is we've got to say to string and we're going to say it's the encoding of UTF-8. And so every single time we receive data, it's going to concatenate it, append it to this data. Now we need to know when it's finished. We do this by using the on end callback. And essentially, essentially, this is where um, our, our request has finished, and now we can start handling the response. So we need to remove this, or move this, should I say, into here, because now um, we, need to, we need to wait until the request is finished. If we left it here, then we wouldn't be handling the data coming from the server, all right? So just to be clear. Okay, so now um, let's, whoops, receive data is then here. So now we're gonna console log receive data, the data that's been sent here. So let's restart our server, come back to Postman, and resend it. And now we're, what we're expecting to see is that we've received this JSON. So let's send it. We've got our 600. And as you can see here in the console, we've got received data. So everything worked fine. Now let's change this to 200. So it's, it's actually the correct status code. Okay. So now we've got this, now we've got this data. What we need to do is actually validate um, validate what data type that is because it's kind of unfair. Well, we we could do this. Let's. I'm going to do it kind of in another place first of all. So as before before we start handling this data here, what we'll do is we'll check the headers because we want to know in this situation that it's got a content type of application JSON because we want to. Um, pass that JSON into JavaScript. We can do this by checking the headers. Now, so we want to know the content type, okay? And this could be either a string or undefined. Now we can say this by using request headers and we can say content type. And uh, if this content type is undefined, so if content type is, whoops, not equal to application JSON, what we're going to do is we're going to return first of all, so our code doesn't go any further. We're going to end our response because we're finished. And we're also going to say status code of 400 because it's a bad request. We don't know how to handle it. If the client has sent the body in another format, we don't know how to, to handle it. So this is why we're just going to end it right now. So let's restart, restart our server, come back to Postman, send it again. And as you can see, we get this 400 this 400 bad request because our content type is still text forward slash plain. 
So let's change it to application forward slash JSON and resend this request. Now you can see we get 200 and we come over to our server and we can see we've got the data once again. So we're all happy. So it means now that we can safely, um, now we can safely pass this um, data to JSON, okay? Whoops. Let's restart the server and let's send it again. Come back to the log and we can see here we now have um, J JavaScript objects. Now, if we didn't do this, so let's comment this out and this time let's not send valid JSON. So let's Let's just basically uh, send hello, this is data, and yeah, we'll just send it as text, all right? This is not valid JSON, and if we remove the um, quotation marks as well, and we send this, we'll, you'll see you get a bad request because we haven't restarted the server. We'll restart it again, and send the data again. Okay, now you can see something crashed, all right? Because we couldn't pass the JSON. So we, we want to make sure that our server doesn't crash. So we need to validate the data first of all. Um, and this is why prior to us passing, um, passing it, we want to check, hey, what content type do we have? So, yeah. And that's, this is the whole point of an HTTP server, is that you tell which content type you have. Okay, so let's say now that we're sending, whoops. Let's now say that we, we've handled it properly, which we have, it's a bad request. Um, and let's put this back to normal again. Okay, so now what about if the client is expecting to receive a response of content type application JSON. So we're sending a body of JSON and we're expecting a response type of JSON as well. So on the client side, you want to be able to check, hey, did the server respond with the correct data? Otherwise, it's, it's a bad request or it's a bad response. So we can, we can inform the client what content type we're sending. Now at the moment, we actually haven't written any data. So let's start by writing some data, shall we? And we can do this by saying response write. And what we'll do is we'll write, um, and we'll stringify this once again. We'll, we'll write that JSON back to the client so it can receive it back again to be completely useless. Okay, so let's stop this again and let's resend the data through Postman. And now you can see that we've got a body of the exact content that we sent. But um, if we look at the headers, you'll, you'll see here that there's no content type. So we need to tell the client what content type we have. And we do this by setting a header on the response. And here we'll say content type is application JSON, which is all good. So let's restart our server, come back to um, Postman, resend it, and now we're being now we're being helpful to the client by informing them what content type we have. Point to note is that you've got to set all this stuff before sending um, setting uh, end. All right, and it's it's good practice to set all of your headers first then write your data and then end it. There is another way of doing it, but um, this is just good practice to make sure that you set all of your headers first and then set your body and then end the request. And if anything, it's kind of worthwhile to make sure that you set the status code first of all. Okay, so this is pretty much a introduction, um, introduction to the HTTP HTTP module. Um, the video is long enough. 
if you're interested in going a little bit deeper into uh, into how to use the HTTP module, um, then watch me in the next video um, like this. I'm not going to be making this the video today, um, but like this video. And if I see enough, uh, if I see enough questions, I see enough likes, and so on, then I'll I'll go one step further into this to to go through anything that you're asking me to to go through. Um, there's a lot more. Questions like, why don't you use Express? Um, you should use Express, but it's always good to know how the HTTP module in uh, Node works first of all, because once you use Express, it's just totally, totally easy, um, because Express makes it um, more declarative. This is the much more imperative way of doing it. But it's good for you to understand, first of all, the HTTP concept, the standards, and how to do it. Um, anyway, I hope that you've learned something from this. Um, I'm really looking forward to making the, the second part, if you want a second part. And uh, yeah, otherwise, if you've got any other ideas for any other Node videos that you want me to do, I'm more than happy to do them for you. So just uh, write it in the comments um, below. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, yeah, have a nice day. Bye then.